Hey associates. So this video um, is just going to go over coding and analyzing data. I'm just going to uh, help you with the research design process when you're thinking about your proposals. Um, and so when you're talking about coding data, right, that's not like computer coding. Uh, the process of coding is really just categorizing information to be more meaningful. So that's what we're talking about when we say you need to code the data or you need to code your literature review, right? It's breaking it into nice themes and categories that are meaningful for the reader. All right. So, right, like I said, categories and data, it's all about writing trends, insights, um, and it kind of depends on the type of data that you have. So like quantitative data is typically gonna be pre-coded because you're establishing these categories before you collect it. So like on a survey, right, the participants select, I strongly agree, I disagree, I'm neutral, I moderately agree, right? So you already have it coded in. So that way when you are you know, running your data through SPSS or Excel or whatever software that you have, you know, they, it already is, okay, this one's a seven, this one's a three, this one's a two, etc. Uh, qualitative data requires coding kind of after slash as you are collecting it. Um, and that's really more on you to find those um, commonalities among the information. So for example, if you're doing like an interview, after you're done with all of your interviews, you kind of go back through them and you find, oh, hey, participants were mentioning you know similar concerns like budget cuts came up a lot right so that'd be like a code that's a trend or insight that you found when talking to all these people um but just keep in mind like whether you have a survey or interview um whether it's quant or qual they both provide like broad and specific categorizations or sort of themes so that way you can understand that bigger picture right so your job when you're writing up this data as a researcher is to go from Here's all these interviews to here are the, you know, three, four, five big themes that, you know, came out of the interview. Um, when you're coding text or visuals, um, you know, or, you know, and by text, I mean an interview um, or reading, you know, something, text can be a lot of different things, or you're looking at images, maybe you're doing something on Instagram, et cetera. Um, basically you need to establish a framework for it. And so this framework is probably gonna come out of your literature review. So maybe like one example of something that is talked a lot about in your literature review is environmental factors, right? And so maybe based on your topic, right? You are gonna be kind of coding and looking for evidence of environmental factors at play. Or, you know, maybe it's budget concerns is something previous research has focused on a lot or they haven't focused on a lot. Um, either way, like that's gonna be part of your framework. Um, and then within your framework, also be open to emerging themes. So that way you can find new pieces of data and contribute new frameworks. Um, and so once you have your framework, then you actually are going through all your data and your text and coding for those particulars. So if one item of your framework is environmental factors, then you need to code for, okay, well, what environmental factors are coming up in these interviews or in these survey responses? Oh, a uh, decreased water supply is something that's coming up or, you know, drought conditions is something that's, you know, coming up, right? Um, same with, okay, budget concerns is something, well, specifically all the people, you know, that I talked to or surveyed talked about increased taxes as a budget under the umbrella of like budgeting concerns or lower profit margins, right? And so you just want to go from this kind of broad framework to like specifically how is that playing out in your data? Um, and so they can kind of be sorted. So here's an example of, here we can hide myself for a second. Um, an example of a coding framework that I did for uh, the Black Panther uh, online comments, um, a paper that I wrote um, in 2018, and I presented it at um, ICA, uh, this Communication Association Conference in May of 2019. Um, and so on this side with the strategy codes, right, these are the most kind of specific, and then it works towards the most broad, right? And so 
first, you know, I started with 3,000 comments and I looked, okay, well, what specifically are people doing and what's in common? So like all of these contribute to this action I saw of rejecting social significances, of trolling the forums, of discussing film elements, of declaring, you know, bias, ridiculing, providing, mentioning, right? And so I kept all of these as verbs because they were specific things that people were doing. And then underneath it, I have examples of what that looked like and how it sort of appeared, right? Um, when discussing film elements, most commonly they talked about CGI and action, or they talked about the cast and director. Um, you know, when they were citing political figures, most often people cited these particular people in their tweets, or they talked about social justice and, and relayed that into political rhetoric, things like that. Um, and so then I go from these, which is still a lot of content, right? I don't want to talk like if somebody asks me, hey, what did you find? Like they don't have time to listen to me go through every single one of these. It's too much. Right? And so that's why we code it into even larger categories. So um, like this idea of like anti-racialism, which is something that came out of my literature. Okay, well, that's how it manifested. And so, you know, I go from all of these little ones to kind of broader categories of, um, you know, skepticism presented itself as questioning and declaring bias, right? Educational stuff presented itself as, you know, providing context and foreign policy, right? But these are still a lot of things for me to stop and talk about at a party with some random person and present on, right? So then I break it into e three biggest categories. And this is where, you know, someone, my mom, right, asked me, hey, what did you find on that research project? I can say, oh, well, I found three kind of key areas and themes that people were doing when talking about Black Panther. First, they were distancing themselves from discourse on race and politics or they were resisting counter information about race and politics, or they were contributing to the public discussion about race and politics, right? That's a nice easy thing rather than going through like, oh, well actually they were doing blah, 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 blah. like that would just be too much and nobody wants to listen to that. Um, and then I also just have examples that really emphasize what um, this idea of like anti-racialism looked like, right? So all of these are examples of that. All of these, you know, are examples of political consumerism. There's only like really one. Um, and so you want to find, and then it, when you're writing up the results, pick these like really key examples that you have. So the reader gets an idea of what the comment would look like, but you're not just going to list out every single comment that appeared because that was your job to look at every single comment. The reader doesn't want to have to go through and read them all. All right. So. Uh, I was going to recap, said the process of coding is really helpful, right? Because readers, you don't have the time and space and they don't have the energy to go through all 3000 comments. That was my job as the researcher. So instead, right, we go from huge amounts of data and narrow it down. So I went from 3000 to 13, right? And then I went from 13 strategies to 11 subcategories of like discourse, right? And then I went from 11 subcategories to three broad themes. And now I'm able to talk about those three broad, big picture themes in my research. So you're going from plentiful, 3000, and really specific, right? Like it's, it's the comments as specific as you can get to, you know, a more limited, right? Only three and they're more broad. It's kind of that big picture. Um, so the biggest thing is just make sure when you're coding that is categorizing for meaning, right? So the biggest thing when you're coding is make sure that you're putting it into these different little buckets that have meaning for the big picture, that have meaning for the reader, so that way they understand and answer the research questions. Make sense? All right. Bye.